Hey, 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 everyone. Anthony Fantano here, Internet's busiest music nerd. You know who it is. Uh, look look at the glow of my laptop on my face. It's, uh, it's beautiful. It's wonderful. <laughs> Hopefully in this video, I'm going to be imparting onto you some very useful information, especially uh, for the independent musicians out there. Uh, but, you know, also uh, those signed to indie labels who are, you know, sort of handling the bulk of a lot of their own social media and PR, uh, this will definitely be useful for as well. Uh, and, you know, even people who aren't uh, coming out with music and putting music up on uh, streaming platforms, this may in fact inform what streaming platform you use and, uh, you know, could make you a more informed consumer. So please do pay attention. Uh, this comes over from Digital Music News. Uh, the article that this comes from is linked down there below, as is the website informationisbeautiful.net, where I believe uh, this is where this infographic comes from. Uh, now, this entire piece is essentially about what music streaming services are paying artists per play. And there are a lot of revelations uh, here written in the article, but, you know, pre they're pretty much all based around this infographic, which I'm going to give my uh, own opinion of. So um, but before I get into it, let's sort of blow it up so you guys see the entire thing. Now, please follow me here. The left, the furthest left column is essentially just the list of these major streaming platforms from top to bottom according to what they pay per play. So at the very top, we have Napster. I didn't even know Napster ran a music stream service. <laughs> but apparently, uh, Napster pays the most per play. Out of all the music streaming services, Napster pays the most. Far and away, uh, that is actually the case. Like, um, it, it, they, they pay multiple times what YouTube pays, what Pandora pays, what Spotify pays, what Deezer plays, what Google what Google Play plays, what Google Play pays, and uh, even Apple Music. So uh, go Napster, I guess. Um, you know what's what's funny about this um, sort of little infographic over here is title aside from Napster is far and away the biggest. Uh, as far as as far as paying out to artists, now I know they've said in the past that you know that they pay out much more than the average streaming service. If I was Title, I would be blasting this sort of info from the rooftops, like you know, take this number, divide it by whatever Pandora or Spotify is paying, and say, hey, we pay like three times more what Spotify pays a lot of artists. We pay it more than two times more. You know, they should be blasting these numbers everywhere to sort of try to sell you on the idea of getting on title to benefit artists. But, you know, I'm sort of getting ahead of myself. That is the left, the furthest left side of the infographic over here. And then we sort of move through this dumb, convoluted, like, uh, line connect. I, I hate it when graphs do this because they're so confusing and I feel like they sort of disincentivize people to sort of get into information, get into statistics. But basically what these uh, dumb lines are pointing to is the total amount of users on these platforms. So you see YouTube down here on the left side, they pay the least per play, but they have the most users. Now, I want you guys to pay attention to this. This is why if you come out with music, you need to be putting music on YouTube. You need to be coming out with some kind of music video or something on YouTube because YouTube is the hub. YouTube is the place. YouTube is the main vein. YouTube is where people are going to experience tons of content, including music. If you take all of the millions of users of all of the streaming services listed here and you add them all up, they're only a fraction of the total users on YouTube. That's why your stuff needs to be on YouTube, okay? Like you're talking about just putting your music in a place where it's eventually someone's gonna stumble upon it. If you tag it, if you upload it, if you regularly you know, sort of share it uh, in an effective manner. Like the chances of you being stumbled upon on YouTube is far greater than that of Tidal, who has the smallest amount of users. Okay, now that's not to say that, you know, you shouldn't put your music on Tidal, you know, but I'm just saying that, you know, obviously you want to be on a place where uh, uh, users are engaged. Um, now, next, right under YouTube is Spotify. But again, Spotify is just a mere fraction of YouTube's total users. Uh, now, moving on from there, we have an interesting piece of the graphic uh, 
to the right of that that says plays needed to earn minimum wage. Uh, apparently on YouTube, that's 2.4 million. On Spotify, it is 380,000, which just sort of goes to show you just how big the differences between payout between YouTube plays and Spotify plays. In order to make the same amount of money on Spotify, you need to be just getting 380,000 plays. That's it. On YouTube, it's 2.4 million, okay? So, you know, keep track of, of, of these numbers, you know, because the thing is, if you have a, you know, decent following of, um, you know, fans, uh, you know, let's say you have 20,000 fans following you on Twitter and, you know, maybe uh, 30,000 following you on Facebook or something, and you have your music uploaded to, you know, several of these platforms, this info here, this, uh, uh, these numbers here should be informing, you know, okay, well, which one am I going to share? You know, obviously you want to get all of them out there, but which link, uh, which music platform are you going to be trying to urge people to use, urge people to stream on the most in order to maximize your profit, maximize the amount of times your stuff gets streamed, maximize your chances of making a living. Uh, to the right of that, we have this annual loss sort of column. I'm not sure if this is it's it's sort of um, labeled confusingly. Is this the amount of money that they're paying out per year as according to these music plays, or is this the amount of money that they're losing as according to it? again? It it doesn't. Uh, it's it's labeled sort of ineffectively. So we're going to kind of ignore that section. It doesn't really you know it's 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 not really pertinent to this video. Uh, what I'm really trying to get you guys to pay attention here to and and sort of notice here is who is paying the most. Who has the most users and where can you maximize the amount of money that you're making? And where can you maximize the amount of money that you essentially give to the artists that you're a fan of? If you are, and there are a lot of music fans out there who are who just primarily stream and that's it. You know, this could greatly inform, these numbers could greatly inform because a lot of these music streaming services, they cost about the same amount of money, the same 10 or $11 a month. So if you're going to throw that money to a music streaming service, which one of these are you going to pick? You know, the one that obviously um, is the most user friendly and maximizes that dollar amount you're spending to the artists that you want to support, that you're a fan of, that you're listening to. Um, so uh, I, I think we're going to leave it there. Again, uh, go down there in the description and uh, you can check out this uh this graph for yourself and just sort of, you know, taking the information uh, again, pretty surprising Napster at the very top, you know, title right underneath that uh, YouTube clearly underpaying people, you know, YouTube is uh, again, just like fractions of fractions of fractions of a cent while well, that's uh, per play. Well, that's the case for, uh, you know, a lot of these, uh, uh, a lot of these, uh, you know, platforms over here. Um, I don't know, man. It's uh, YouTube's looking pretty shameful <laughs> as far as payout for a lot of these music artists. You know, to sort of go back to this one column in the graph, you know, I talked about how you need 2.4 million on um, uh, YouTube in order to make minimum wage, 380,000 on Spotify. Right down at the very bottom, we have a uh, title over here. So on title, you need to be making 130,000 plays in order to make almost like $1,500, which is like not a lot. That's not a lot of streams. That's not a lot of plays. You know, that's how much, I wish I was getting that CPM for my videos on YouTube. <laughs> I wish I was getting that CPM. Um, but uh, uh, that's probably not the right terminology, but I wish I, I, would, I, wish I was getting that much per play on YouTube. Uh, so, you know, again, uh, look at this infograph. You know, especially if you're an independent artist, if you're one of these dudes who's on Bandcamp and you're on SoundCloud and you're getting tons of purchases, you're getting tons of uh, purchases on Bandcamp, you're getting tons of streams, like thousands of streams on SoundCloud, you know, you're, you're essentially just fucking burning money, you know, because you could be, if, if you're getting thousands of people to stream your shit on SoundCloud, you might as well just be hammering your fucking skull in. You know, find a way to get those users to stream your stuff, find a service, 
try to connect with a small indie label or something, you know, who will take just a very small cut to get you on some of these platforms, whatever you got to do. You know, there are a lot of people who do it independently. Uh, there are a lot of people who get other people to do the legwork for them. Find out what you have to do to get your music on whatever platform you need to, because 130,000 plays on SoundCloud is nothing. 130,000 plays on Tidal is $1,500 in your pocket that you didn't have before. So again, look at these numbers, you know, look at what's going on here. And, uh, you know, again, knowledge is power. Use this stuff to your benefit. 